Hello, and welcome to another Vi Top video. In this one, I'm versus Darius, and it's not the craziest video in the world, but I thought it was a pretty fair example of both sides of the matchup. So here he cheeses out of the bush, and right here I step in for a grass proc with my blast shield, but by no means was it worth it to let him get the five stacks. It's just uh, one of those things where I haven't fought the matchup in a minute, and so I just wasn't really thinking about it. There's a few times during this video where I make some mistakes here and there, but they're definitely easy to not make. You just have to actively think about it a little bit. So early on, I mean, this is just the lane. <laughs> you kind of have to concede to Darius level 1, 2, and usually level 3. Um, he just zones you off the wave, and that's fine. I went tier because I knew I wasn't going to be fighting him ever. So just building up those stacks where you can. And if you sack minions, I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's fine. It's just kind of what you have to end up doing at the end of the day versus good old Dyrone. As you see, he pulled me in there. I only queued in to stop him and get my blast shield, but still take a hefty chunk of damage for it. Realistically, he probably could have dove me here, but I got lucky that he didn't want to since he already used his pull. I was thinking about backing, but I don't really have enough gold for anything, and I have a health pot running, so I'll just stay. So, the big parts of this matchup are... He kind of zones you off, and you have to just watch for his pull or his W a lot. A lot of times he'll try to pull you when you last hit a minion, and so that's just that's how, how she goes. Um, so a lot of them you have to give up. Your one goal is to not get pulled. If he pulls you, you want to usually E him and then Q out. That way you have blast shield and then you can bounce. I saw Lee Sin on the top side of the map. And I was ready to go in, but then I noticed Belveth was down there and he was fighting, so I just started moving my way over there. Darius ends up doing the same, and I see him, so I just kind of path back. I see a ward that he put down, so I might as well take it, since it's not like I'm going to be able to push the wave versus him anyway. So, this game, they had quadruple a AD and then Zig support. So, a new build I've been trying recently is... Manamune into Frozen Heart with an unknown mythic. So here I fight him because I have such a big wave and I procced his uh, bone plating already. I flash there just to secure the kill before he gets like a reset or his Q back up to potentially win the trade. I probably could have queued him, but it's better safe than sorry. <laughs> so what I was saying is I like the Manamune into Frozen Heart kind of an Ezreal type build just because you get so much mana and thus so much AD from the item. Plus versus 4 AD it's just a lot of armor and it's really really beneficial. I've been trying <laughs> going Manamune Everfrost into Frozen Heart because that gives the next most mana and it also gives cooldown reduction, more lockdown, and your E has a 100% AP scaling but I didn't end up going that this game. Um, as you can see, lane stays pretty even. Uh, he's got a little bit more CS than me just because he's been denying. I took TP and Grasp this game instead of Lethal Tempo. As you've seen, I have to concede a lot to Darius, and there's not a lot of avenues to actually utilize Lethal Tempo. So that's why I go for the short trades with the Grasp. And although... Mana Flow Band isn't super necess necessary. Uh, it does give six more attack damage at the end of the day with your Mana Mune, which isn't a ton, but it gives a little bit more, you know, mana regen later or for during the laning phase, which can be useful. And Gathering Storm is also really good with this build since it's more of a scaling mid to late game build. Here I'm six and he's five, so I go in. I end up getting my second proc and dodges hook. Now the thing I mess up here, I go in again, but I should R auto E instead of this Q. 
the only time you should queue is when you see him start that queue of his own. Because the main use of Vi's queue in this matchup is to avoid his Q so he doesn't get the heal. So I could have killed him there if I did R auto E to proc the denting blows. But feels bad. Um, he has bone plating up and obviously his jungler, so I wasn't paying attention to where they were. So that's that's on me. I tried to juke a little bit. Had I gone in on him, I think I actually would have been able to kill him in hindsight. But I was more so trying to just uh, waste time and escape. Got a couple grass procs. But, and our, our team takes the dragon, so I'm content with this trade. With our team on the dragon, I expected their jungler also to be down there, which is why I went for a play at all. Um, but... I probably should have played a little bit safer since I was technically the only play on the map to be had, but hindsight is 20-20 once again. So here we have a little bit gold lead on Darius. I like to go and push and then take the Rift Herald as always. I always want to solo this because it's a lot of local gold for yourself and I can take it by myself easily. However, my Lee Sin start to come. I actually backpain him multiple times, and he comes anyway and shares the local game, which sucks a lot, but I get Rift Herald anyway, so it, at the end of the day, whatever, but just annoying because he did absolutely nothing to help with it, and then takes my gold for it, because jungle mindset, gotta take the objectives, but whatever. I appreciate the help, but I don't need it. <laughs> So here, I believe I have enough gold for Mana Mune. I see Darius, but I'm not looking to fight him because I'm not super strong yet. He has Steel Caps and um, Sheen, so he's fairly strong. I do end up getting my item. I don't have TP, but that doesn't really matter because I pushed the wave. So we're, we're pretty strong now. Um, not super, super strong. As you see, I instantly walked away because he's obviously going to go for the pull. Um, but we're really good once we get our Glacial Buckler, which is the item that builds into Frozen Heart. It gives 250 mana, 20 armor, and I believe 20? It's either 20 or 10 uh, CDR, which is just nice. So here we go for a short trade on him again because uh, I want to. <laughs> He should be okay. I tried to flash because I knew he was going to flash with his Q. Unfortunately, I walk away when I could have probably gotten one more auto and won the trade. But my team ends up coming up and it's fine. So here, I'm going to rewind it. So it's really awkward. So we fight. And then here, I know he's going to look to Q flash on me. So right here, it's too obvious he's positioning for it. I try to flash up to not get hit by it, but I horribly missed, <laughs> miss, uh, misspaced it. And then here, I could have autoed one more time. I thought his last auto was going to kill me, so I started to walk away preemptively, but it didn't. So I didn't really trust my damage too much there, unfortunately, but uh, it would have been okay. So here I got Rift. I just want to use it. I know. So in this matchup, I took Shield Bash because I don't trust myself pushing against Darius because, once again, uh, you don't really trade into him too much. Um, or you ideally don't want to. So you're going to get pushed in a lot. So you don't get a ton of use for Demolish. And I solely use Demolish for getting plates. For the most part, Shield Bash is more beneficial. For a little bit more survivability, a little bit more damage, and that's why I just need to get all the red there. Here, Lee Sin comes up to save the day, and then he lock him on the tower, and I step back so he can't pull me and just kill me, and then end up killing the Lee Sin. Here, I have my LP up now, so I just want to use it so he can't get any <laughs> potential um, kill on us back. So the main goal here is one and a half minutes until plates fall. Hard, the hard shove in the wave, and then get as many plates as we can. Realistically, it's probably only going to be one 
hopefully Belveth isn't up here with the dragon up now. Realistically, she should be down there, especially since Alivusin just showed top with the gank. Um, here we've got that's what we used to grasp the undying and the shield bash. Get 136, so it's not a ton. Second wind is put in work versus the bleed, and then I went overgrowth just because Zarya's pull isn't really a CC. Belveth's knockup is a knockup, so it's not a CC, and the only other thing they have is Kiana stun, which I'm not really worried about. So. Unflinching seemed kind of bad in this matchup, especially because usually if you're in that threshold, you're going to die to Darius's ult anyway. So here we got the Mana Mune and we got the Glacial Buckler. And there it is, the 10 CDR. So we have 46 attack damage from the mana before we buy it. And we have 52. So it gives 6 more attack damage, that item alone. So it gives 20 armor, 250 mana, 10 CDR, and 6 attack damage. Which isn't a ton, but I mean it's better than the And it was really unfortunate. <laughs> Here I, I was waiting for my Red Team Double Kill. Warden's mail. And I tried to TP in with just enough time to get there, as you can see from me rewinding. Um, and I have almost enough gold. We get, we start the TP, we get to 999, which you need a thousand. So, feels bad. Um, so I just push the wave and I go back for it anyway. Whatever. That's awkward, I'm not going to sit on. <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty stupid. But, bad mistake, I think wait another second. But, it is what it is. We're not super strong until we get the next item anyway, or the full item of the Frozen Heart. I really like Lucidity Boots into this build as well, because just more CDR means more E, means more damage, um, and you already have enough armor, so it's not like you need plated steel caps. So here I ping to go for the Belveth with the Leafs in, just because she should be on the top side of the map, but what ends up happening is flashes on her, and then Lucid kicks her away, unfortunately. And he still gets the kill somehow? I assume it's... Well, I would have assumed it was with her knight, but she did... Oh, it must have been with her knight. Anyway, so, successful-ish realm. We didn't lose anything from it, and realistically, we should be able to push here and then go to the next um, with no downside. I see Lucid over there. I want the wave first before I go to open, because I don't really want to End up just normal full combo. He heals, but I'm not scared of dying at this point. Um, even if he hit me with that, I wouldn't have died, so that's okay. Here, I should push the tower and then go rip. Let's see what ends up happening. Belveth so should be on the top side of the map now, but it should be okay. I should be able to 1v1 her or at least escape. Wave, even though it's not necessary. I know Darius won't be back in the game. See, either I go to Rift here, which is very risky with the static, or I do this off. Because Meek's fighting, I'm kind of fighting down there. I see both of them. See, there's no need for Blade of the Ruling King or anything. So right now, this item is giving me... Shut down. How much was that? 96 attack damage by itself. That's a pretty hefty amount for one item. Shut down. And I'm not sure what's the best with this so far. Um, those are all the stats from just <laughs> my normal rune. But given the fact that Kiana's pretty slippery, Ezreal's pretty slippery, and Zelda's are pretty slippery... I'm opting to go for Stride Breaker here. Um, not for any reason particular other than a little bit more slowing. Plus the item's blue. 
so it works with the build. Um, I think Triforce could be alright. I think Sunderer, all the normal stuff could be alright. Uh, you don't really need to go for a tanky thing. Um, and here I'm waiting. I saw the Darius on the Ezreal top side. I want to Rift Herald the enemy top tower and just take it. But we see Belveth mid, so I start passing over here. I was thinking Darius was trying to cheese me up top. But we see Ezreal go for him. He didn't E away, which is interesting. I was waiting for the start of the animation before I R. And he still didn't E away. I follow him here and then get his flash. And I don't know what that guy was doing. So he <laughs> did the thumbs down emote. Here I misplaced the rift a little bit, so it you know, didn't get there immediately. Here he pushing a little bit further. I expect them to come up top now because dragons for sure gone, so they should come to stop me. So I just wait, see if I can get the charge. See the zig bomb, so I just. We got the objective on the bottom side, we got the objective on the top side, and we get a charge on the eagle tower. So that's cool. So we're in a really, really good position right now. We can 1v1 Darius at any time, however given just the state of the champion, he can still 1v1 us at any time if we misplay it. Um, I think Grasp is pretty good. Into Darius, once again, because of short trades, and it's a little more sustained. But I, I think usually I like to go Titanic Hydra first, and then you just kind of play a tanky denial style into him. Here we see the Kiana top side. So I just go for a kill on her. I don't really mind flash. She tries to flash away, so immediately I follow. And she was slowed by the um, stride breaker there as soon as I did my combo. That's why she wasn't able to get away any quicker. Um, but we did pretty good in this match. Um, got all our objectives topside that we wanted. We played well into Darius. We didn't give him kills early for no reason. Um, there were a few mistakes here and there, but for the most part, matchup is definitely doable, but it can be irritating because it's really slow until you have at least one item. And even then, a lot of times you lose. So it's just kind of waiting and picking and choosing. As you saw when I ulted into him, once again, your main, main point of Q is either to get away from him or to avoid his Q hitting you with the strong part. And then E is just for blast shield proc. <laughs> Negate as much damage as you can. As I was saying before, I like to play a denial style into Garen, Jack, Hydra, into or a black Here we got a big fight mid. Velveth actually does a good amount of damage. We end up getting it. And we go for big on the We're actually behind a little bit. Top lane is a little bit. So we can do what I've been doing. And we a little bit. Here we get a double slow on him. I don't want to go for Ezreal. Because I think it might be easier to go for the Ziggs. But he ends up hitting me with everything. I didn't realize that he was very strong. And so he just... Ignites me and kills me with seven and three super zigs. So that was my bad for simply not looking at the map and uh, the state of the game. You know, top lane syndrome right there. But at least I didn't give the shutdown to anyone relevant like the Belvet. Somehow, the enemy top laner has a shutdown now. I, <laughs> I don't know how that goes. Here we're just hovering around the dragon. I want to get to the end of the first fight here, but So I'm on the Belzec. As soon as Ezreal shows, I just go on to him. He just runs through everybody, and it's just, it's a slaughter. Um, as soon as I see this, top lane is doable to kill, so I'm just going to go up there. See if I can get the inhib. But it looks like the, uh, the enemy team isn't really about it, so let's just surrender. So, 
in the end of the game, or in end of the day, I think this matchup is doable, but once again, pretty irritating. Um, I don't know if this is optimal into him. I just think it was really good due to the fact that they had quite a lot of AD. Grasp seemed okay into him. Shield Bash seemed all right as well for more survivability. Second Wind, once again, puts in a lot of work versus his bleed. And a lot of times, Doran's shield is really good into him as well. But I think to each their own. Thank you for watching.